we right there have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high-altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime, and you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time, so just minutes from now. The Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um... Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. All right, we're going to start hearing uh, the SpaceX crew operations research, resource engineer. SpaceX, everything is with you. 4.16, enjoying the ride. Copy that, Freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer. Expect automated shoot deployment. Like we said before, things moving very quickly as Dragon Freedom makes its way home. Down to about 350 miles per hour, so that really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to about 119 miles per hour. We can see... 15 kilometers. Brace for drogue window. Surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom. As it returns back to Earth, we are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate normal. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. The crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. Oh. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy names. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Thanks, Freedom. Thousand. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining us, you're looking at 800 meters, a live view of Crew-9 just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Coffee, was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel. Uh, 
Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their, uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Splashdown. Good main release. Copy splashdown. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are en route. Uh, understand, and, uh, we're in section two, four decimal eight hundred. Uh, We can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We wanna make sure we uh, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on orbit to um, climb aboard the capsule and work through procedures ahead of lifting um, onto the nest um, of the recovery vessel, Megan. We heard it's going to be about 25 minutes or so until that um, lift actually takes place. The station conducted for Butch and Sunny to ensure they were ready to return on a Dragon spacecraft. Thanks, Nick. I've got you loud and clear as well. We have completed our forward link transition. And Jaden, if you did just want to go ahead and let us know what is next to retrieve the crew, we are continuing to get some great views on our screen, but I know you have an even better view yourself. Now here on your screen, we can see uh, dolphins actually, <laughs> who want to come and play with, uh, with Dragon. Now one of the fast boats there in place working to assist the recovery team member. It's incredible. I just love these, these views. We really see them even better in daytime, but just seeing the recovery team work in tandem to uh, step through each step, uh, or excuse me, to step through each operation. 
Um, and, uh, you know, obviously they're, they're getting quick assists from the honorary part of the recovery team, those dolphins uh, in the water there. Now, the, the recovery crew mem team member that is crawling around the Dragon spacecraft, uh, earlier we saw a view where it was like a spider monkey pose. Um, we can see that individual now standing in the bucket where the main parachutes were stored while Dragon was on orbit. Obviously, those main parachutes were utilized for splashdown today. Uh, they were deployed and cut from the Dragon capsule, uh, and one of the fast boats, in the, uh, one of the other fast boats of the recovery team, working to pull those out of the water. Now, the recovery team member that is there working on top of the Dragon capsule. Earlier, we saw that person performing safety checks. Now we can see some harnessing being placed around the capsule. This harnessing is what will be used to lift the Dragon capsule out of the water and onto the recovery vessel. So again, Dragon continuing to get closer and closer to the recovery vessel, Megan. You see some of those uh, ropes now uh, coming into view as well. They're now working through procedures uh, to hoist this, this spacecraft up onto the recovery vessel Megan. We just saw that hydraulic arm get lowered into the lifting position. That arm will be the mechanism that is utilized to lift Dragon up and out of the water and into the, uh, the nest located there at the aft end of the recovery vessel. We're getting some views now from actually on site inside the boat. Freedom. Rigging is almost complete. Approximately five minutes until capsule list. Bracing. There it goes. Dragon Freedom being lifted out of the water and onto our recovery vessel, Megan. So once securely on... Uh, Welcome aboard the recovery vessel. It's out as much of the salt water as possible to reduce that corrosion. We can see that the spacecraft... Freedom, translation is in progress. Copy and seal it. If we can see that spacecraft was successfully recovered from the ocean surface and is now being uh, washed with fresh water as obviously they splash down in salt water. So we're trying to rinse off as much of that salt water as possible. Now opening that side hatch uh, isn't quite like opening, uh, you know, the, the door to your car. We have to depress the seal around the side hatch um, as well as, you know, we'll now see them uh, open that side hatch up. And there you have it. The side hatch is open for the first time since September. You can see some of the protective uh, equipment there that was brought into frame. That will help protect the, the edge of the side hatch. One from any potential damage. Oh, we can see the recovery crew member there taking photos of the, the side hatch seal. This is part of the standard operation for recovery. These photos will get saved into our into our procedure. As I mentioned before, oh, of course we got to get a well documented <laughs> photo of the moment. I although we can't see it from here, I'm pretty sure there are four smiles on board right now. And we did hear that report out from the commander Nick Haig following splashdown that there were four four smiles as far as he could see. Yeah, capsule full of grins. <laughs> Now, generally speaking, um, and, and there we do see crew nine, some happy waves, smiles all around back on Earth. Looks like we're about to get our first crew member here uh, upon egress of the Dragon spacecraft. 
So we are standing by for that egress. Outside of Dragon, you do see one of those stretchers. This is the expected procedure as the crew will be taken to medical fil facilities following their exit from Dragon. We can see folks on board clapping as our first crew member. And that is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, commander of Crew 9. Now out of Crew Dragon Freedom. Some smiles, thumbs up, and a wave. Can't get any better than that. Yeah, that is one happy camper, that's for sure. As we said before, it is standard procedure for all of our long duration crew members to receive assistance upon egressing from the spacecraft. Alexander Gorbanov, his first space flight, spent 171 days in space alongside NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Looks like we're getting some cheers and clapping on board as Alexander is slid down the little ramp and placed into the mobility aid. Once again, big smile. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that have just recently joined, the Dragon had an on-time splashdown. Oh, it looks like we're getting our next crew member here. That is none other than Sunny Williams. Big smile, big waves. She, like her other crew members, now uh, will be assisted onto the mobility aid. There we have it, some waves, some thumbs up, and some smiles. Definitely seems to be a theme among all recovery operations. Absolutely. And of course, that leaves NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore inside Dragon in seat four. We're getting some views of him now as he egresses or exits the spacecraft. Once again, some elation and cheers there from Butch Wilmore. As we mentioned before, returning to Earth from coming from a microgravity environment can wreak havoc on the body. So it is customary uh, and just standard procedure for all of our long-term space residents to uh, get assistance once they are back on board the recovery vessel. Well, now that Nick, Butch, Sonny, and Alexander are safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by the NASA medical team, we're going to wrap up our live coverage of their return.